Bibles this morning, we'd like to ask you to please turn to the book of Acts. I would like to read from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We'll be reading a portion of what Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost. A lot of beautiful statements that uh, Peter was able to make while he was preaching on the day of Pentecost. And the one particular expression that I don't think I've ever noticed until studying in the last couple of weeks. There's one particular expression found here that I pray that God will help us to learn uh, the beauty in this statement. Reading now from Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 22, and reading through verse 24. Where God says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. I want us to think about that expression in the last verse that I read where God loosed the pains of death. God loosed the pains of of death. Death is something I don't like to think about or talk about. It's not something to be feared. In fact, as we read and study the Word of God, the more we know about the truth of God's Word, the less we will fear death because the pains of death have been loosed in the minds and hearts of the people of God. God has loosed the pains of death. And that can be in reference to the pains that lead up to death, but it can also be the pains that are experienced while dying. Sometimes God's people have dying grace, that is, they feel the presence of God and the power of God, and you can see that the pains of death have no no control over them whatsoever. One of the most uh, beautiful experiences I ever had was the night that Brother Foster Smith went home to be with the Lord and him, all of his family were gathered around him that night and it was one of the most glorious, powerful, spirit-filled departures from this life that I've ever felt and seen. But the pains of death were gone. He didn't feel any of the pains of death. God loosed those pains of death. And it's a, it's a glorious and marvelous experience when God will loose the pains of death from individuals. And there's no fear of death. There's no fear of dying. There's no fear of the sequence of events that might precede death. There's no fear of the pain that Sometimes we have to go through. There are, there is pain often. This doesn't say that there's no, not going to be any pain. It says that God loosed the pains of death. In the life of Jesus Christ, there were many pains that he experienced prior to actually dying on the cross of Calvary. One of the worst pains that he experienced was when all of his All of his disciples forsook him and fled. That was a painful experience. And they all forsook him and fled. And they denied him. Because they feared the pains of death. Why did Peter deny Jesus Christ three times? Because he was afraid to die. And why did many of the other disciples, all the other disciples, why did they forsake him? Because they feared the pains of death. And if you and I as a people of God, if we can begin to understand that God has loosed the 
pains of death if we can see what Jesus accomplished by dying on the cross of Calvary and we can see what he accomplished by being raised from the dead that's the most glorious loosing of the pains of death that has ever taken place was when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead God loosed the pains of death there better than we can ever see in any other way but there were pains of death that Jesus experienced before him actually dying on the cross of Calvary. In fact, when he went to the Garden of Eden and was praying prior, just prior to him going to the cross of Calvary, do you think he experienced the, the pains of death while he was there in the Garden of Eden? Yeah, he experienced the pains of death there. In fact, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7 says that he was crying aloud and great tears flowed down his face while he was in the Garden of Eden there praying. The pains of death were there. In fact, if you back up in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 26, let's just look at some of the pains of death. Matthew chapter 26, we'll see some of the pains of death that preceded him actually dying and being completely eternally released from the pains of death. Look in your Bibles at Matthew chapter 26 beginning in verse 36. The Word of God talks about Jesus facing death and knowing that he was facing death and knowing the pains that were coming and knowing the pains he experienced. See, Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. But Jesus, he is the Son of God, but Jesus is also the Son of Man. And as the Son of Man, he felt pain just like me or you would feel if we had been nailed to the cross of Calvary. He felt the pains that you and I feel in our lives. The Bible says Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus experienced pain. He experienced the pains that preceded death. Look at that in uh, Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse 36. The Lord of God says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, See ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. You hear those expressions there? Sorrowful and very heavy. You know what he was feeling? The pains of death. The word of God says in the next verse, Then said he unto them, Jesus said to Peter, James, and John, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Was he praying fervently for that cup to pass from him? Then he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but as thou wilt. And then he kept praying, and every time he prayed, every time he would come back to the apostles, and they'd be asleep, and then he would go back and he would pray again. Every time he went back to pray, you'll find that the pains of death were being loosed each time that he prayed. The fear, the pain, the agony that Jesus knew he was going to face, those pains were being loosed step by step. Then you turn to Matthew chapter 27. You can read in Matthew 27, I'm not going to take the time to do this, but you can go home and read Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 through 46. And in those 21 verses you'll find the pains that Jesus Christ went through as he was prior, as he was going to the cross of Calvary. Look in your Bibles at Matthew 27. I'm not going to name all of them, but the Bible talks here about them stripping him and them mashing a crown of thorns on his head. They mocked him. They spit upon him. They smote him on his head. They gave him vinegar and mingled with gall. They reviled and mocked him. They nailed him to the cross. I want you to see, brethren, that the pains that Jesus experienced, God was with him and was in the process of releasing those pains of death. He did suffer. 
He suffered more than any man has ever suffered. He especially suffered when all of our sins were placed on him. And it was the darkest hour this world has ever known. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that moment, the pains of death were the worst that Jesus had ever experienced. Those pains of death of having sin. He who knew no sin, he became sin for us. And the pain that he experienced right then was greater than you and I will ever know or ever comprehend. The pains of death. And then after that happened, after he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I want you to hear the next words. After he said that, he said, It is finished. It's complete. I finished the work that you gave me to do. Do you see a difference in him crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then him crying out, It is finished. And then he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Those were the last words he spoke. I want you to see that he... I want you to see the transition of him going from my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? To him saying, it is finished. And then him saying, Father, Father. See, he said in, in that crying out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But the last words he spoke was, what was the word, first word? Father, Father. Didn't just say my God, he said Father. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost and he died. And he went to the grave. The pains of death had hold of him. In a sense. But what does the text say in Acts chapter 2? Go back to Acts chapter 2. The scripture says that Peter on the day of Pentecost was preaching... In Acts chapter 2 and verse 24, after Peter tells these people that they have, with their wicked hands, they have crucified and slain Jesus Christ. Verse 24, Acts 2, 24 says, Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. It, pronoun it, referring back to what? Death. It was not possible that death could hold him. Death, hell, and the grave could not hold Jesus Christ. He was loosed from the pains of death. And when those women went to the tomb three days after he had experienced that horrible pain of death and crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Three days later, after he had been in the tomb for three days and three nights, when they got to the tomb, the declaration was made he is not here he is risen I'll tell you he had been what's the word loosed from the pains of death now I want you to see and know and understand that when we believe that Jesus was loosed from the pains of death by his resurrection see that's the main things under consideration in Acts 2 24 is that you kill Jesus with your wicked hands and then God has raised him up from the dead and loosed the pains of death. Brethren, by God loosing the pains of death on Jesus Christ as he raised him from the dead, I also have no fear of death. The pains of death ought not to have hold of you. The fear of death Ought not to be a part of your life. Why did Peter deny Christ three times as the soldiers came to take Jesus Christ? Why did Peter deny Christ three times? Why? Because he feared what? He feared the pains of death. He feared death. He feared the pains of death. He was afraid to die. He was afraid to be put to death. He was afraid to be crucified like Jesus was being crucified. So he cursed and denied Christ. Now 
In Acts chapter 2, Peter is preaching on the day of Pentecost and because Jesus had been loosed from the pains of death, now Peter has no fear of death. The pains of death have left him because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And because Jesus had the pains of death loosed from him, the pains of death were loosed from Peter also. And Peter says that God hath begotten, turn in your Bibles to look at something else Peter said in 1 Peter. Look in your Bibles at 1 Peter chapter 1. I want you to hear what Peter said. There's a major transition in Peter's life. There's a major change in Peter's life. He's no longer afraid to die. He's willing to die. And when they, when they commanded him and the other apostles not to speak in the name of Jesus anymore, they weren't afraid to be beaten. They, they thought it was a great blessing that they were counted worthy to suffer for Christ's sake. To suffer what? What's the word? Four letter word? Pain. They were willing to suffer pain. Were they willing? Did they suffer pain? And they were willing to suffer pain because why? They knew what was on the other side of death. <laughs> you could threaten Peter with death and all Peter can think about and all Peter can say is go ahead. Because when I die I'm immediately going to be in the presence of my Father in eternal heaven. I have no fear of death anymore. And so Peter could stand on the day of Pentecost and said to those people who had crucified Jesus, he says, with your wicked hands you crucified him. And he said, God has raised up that same Jesus whom you crucified, and he is now Lord and Christ. He had no fear of the people because God, by loosing the pains of death, in Jesus Christ, God had loosed the pains of death in Peter also. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Here's what Peter says now. Toward the end of his life, he says, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Oh, Peter now has a lively hope. A lively hope that the grave is not the end. A lively hope that the pains of death that could not hold Jesus, those pains of death cannot hold Peter. And Peter knew that. Peter believed that. Therefore, the fear of death was gone because Peter knew that the pains of death had been loosed from him. And then it's a great blessing not to fear death. It's a great blessing to have no fear of death at all. You'll be able to do things when you have no fear of death that you weren't able to do before. You'll be able to take stands against ungodliness that you weren't able to take before because you're not afraid to suffer. You're not afraid of the pains of death. You're not afraid of the pains that precede you dying and you're not afraid of the pains of death in dying. You're not afraid to die because you know you're going to be raised from the grave. And so in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, you have been, what's the next word? Loosed. You have been loosed from the pains of death. And you can say like Peter, I've got a lively hope. Jesus is going to take me to heaven. Amen. I'm not afraid. Threaten me all you want to. I'm not afraid. I've been loosed. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I've been loosed from the pains of death. It's a great blessing to see the saints of God face death. And to be able to say, back up in your Bible just a moment to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want you to hear what Paul said. We just noticed what Peter said. I want you to hear about what Paul said about the pains of death. Was Paul afraid to die? Was he afraid to have all the Jews turn against him? Was he afraid to go to the Gentiles and preach to the Gentiles even though he had been killing the Gentiles? I'll tell you, if he had killed my daddy, you know what I would have probably done? If my daddy was a Christian and Paul killed my daddy and I saw him, you know what I would have wanted to do? I'd have wanted to kill Paul too. And all these Christians that Paul has been killing, they all had loved ones. 
and it took the restraining grace of God to keep them from killing him. But I'll tell you, the Jews couldn't kill him, and the Gentiles couldn't kill him, and nobody could kill him until he had finished the work that God gave him to do. And he wasn't afraid of death. Beautiful expression in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, beginning in verse 55. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This whole chapter is about the resurrection of the body. One of the statements he makes is, If Jesus is not raised from the dead, our faith is vain. <laughs> Jesus is raised. He goes on to say, He is raised from the dead. Because He is risen, we know that we're going to be raised also. That's being loose from the pains of death. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. The Apostle Paul says, O oh, death, where is thy sting? You hear him looking death right in the face. You see him mocking death. You see him saying to death, You can't. You can't hurt me. I'm loosed from the pains of death. He could say to anybody, Kill me if you want to. But I'm just going to glory. In fact, he wrote to the saints of God at Philippi. And he says, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ. Which is far better than being here on this earth. <laughs> well, well, my goodness. He's loosed from the pains of death. And he can look death right in the face and say, I'm not afraid of you. Oh, death, where is thy sting? What happened to the sting? O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Are you afraid of the grave? There's no reason to be afraid of the grave. There's no reason to be afraid of death. Why? Because the death couldn't hold Jesus and the death and the grave can't hold you. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 15, 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know how Paul was loosed from the pains of death? It was by the sufferings and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did he believe in the resurrection? Did Paul believe in the resurrection? He writes more about it than anyone else. That's the reason he had such boldness everywhere he went. He was loosed from the pains of death. Turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Listen to what Paul says here. Great truth that we all need to remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Listen to verses 6, 7, and 8. The Apostle Paul, by inspiration of God, says, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, willing rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. You think I'm going to die? How many of you think I'm going to die? You think you're going to die? Are you going to die? Are you afraid of death? You ought not to be. And not only should you not be afraid of death, you ought not to be afraid when your loved ones die. The Apostle Paul says that we should not sorrow as others who have no hope. You think I cried when my daddy died? I sure did. You think I felt the pain of death? I did. But you know who released me from that pain of death? Jesus Christ. Because he immediately let me know and reminded me, your daddy is home with the Lord right now. You think I cried when my son died? I cried, I wept harder than I've ever cried in my entire life. But I'll tell you what, within 30 minutes, Jesus loosed me from the pains of death. And I could say, well, death, where's your sting? Well, grave, where's your victory? My son, my daddy, my mama, where are they? They're in the presence of the Lord. They're with Jesus. The Bible tells us that in the very moment that we die, the Spirit returns to God that gave it. I'll tell you, that makes me a happy person. So if, if the doctors say, you've got a year to live, now the first time that happened 21 years ago, and the doctor said, you've got less than a year to live without a heart transplant, I broke down and cried. And I called about six or eight men in the church. I said, y'all meet me at the house. I've got less than a year to live. And I was crying. And we met. 
Brother Grady Crawford said, oh, they told you you got a year to live? Oh, yes. He said, well, I don't even have a promise of tomorrow living. <laughs> and they promised you a year? They said, that's pretty good. What happened to me? I forgot about my Savior. I forgot that if I had died during that year, I was going home to be with the Lord. I forgot that my Lord is going to take care of my family. I forgot until I remembered. And then I was loosed from the pains of death had great peace go with me in, in back to the Old Testament do you think this is a truth that just began to be known when uh, Jesus was crucified and rose from the grave no people God's children in all ages of the world have understood the resurrection of the body listen look in your Bibles at Job chapter 19 turn your Bibles very quickly to Job chapter 19 in Job chapter 19, beginning in verse 25, Job and brethren had Job gone through some pains of death in his life. When they told him, you've lost all of your possessions, had he gone through some pain right then? All ten of his children were dead. Did he have pain in him right then? When they began to see those boils on Job from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, did Job go through pains of death? When his wife said, curse God and die, did Job go through some pains of death? But here's what Job says in Job 19. He says in Job 19 verse 25, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. Well, my goodness, Jesus hasn't even been born yet. He hasn't even come into the earth. But he was already alive because Jesus is eternal. And Jesus was way back there in the beginning of this world. It's by the word of Jesus that this world came into existence. Amen. And so G Job says, Job says, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. That's a glorious, glorious truth. Jesus is going to stand on the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. He's loosed from what? What's he loosed from? He's loose from the pains of death. Whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another though my reins be consumed within me. Job went through hell here on this earth. But Job experienced some heaven here on this earth. God loosed him from the pains of death. Because he knew his redeemer. My redeemer liveth. I have no fear of death. Go to Psalm 116 verses 3, 4, and 5. Psalm 116. I want you to listen carefully to what David says. What I want you to understand among other things this morning is that Peter was released from the pains of death. Paul was released from the pains of death. Job was released from the pains of death. David was released from the pains of death. And you also, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you should be loosed from the pains of death. You know what I want you to do when I'm, when I'm dead? You know what I want you to do? I want you to stand up in church and sing. I want you to sing to the glory of God. Because you know where I'm going to be? I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to see him face to face. Psalm 116, beginning in verse 3. The word of God says, this is David speaking. Psalm 116, verse 3. The sorrows of death compassed me. That means they were all around me. The sorrows of death compassed me. And the, what's the next word there? Pain. And the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. What did he do then? Verse 4. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Verse 8. Come down to verse 8. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from fears, and my feet from falling. <laughs> 
What a great Savior we have. Thou hast delivered my soul from death. Thou hast delivered mine eyes from fears. And thou hast delivered my feet from falling. What a mighty God we serve. May God help us to believe what happened to Jesus really happened. He was loosed. God loosed him from the pains of death. God loosed the pains of death. And may God loose the pains of death in your life is my prayer for Christ's sake.